Hey guys, it's Chris. From jumping out of planes with cash to the biggest heists of all time, here are nine of the most ingenious thefts ever. Number nine, D.B. Cooper. People are often fascinated by stories of robbery and getaways that just seem to boggle the government. And in 1971, one of the biggest robberies in history took place, not on a train or in a bank, but on an airplane. This is the tale of D.B. Cooper. This happened on November 24, 1971, the day before Thanksgiving. A man named Dan Cooper went to the Northwest Orient Airlines flight counter at Portland International Airport, and he purchased a ticket. That ticket was to Seattle, Washington, which would be a 30-minute trip by flight, and he paid in cash. Once the flight took off, Cooper handed a napkin with a note to a flight attendant. She didn't read it at first, thinking it was his number or something like that. But then he told her, Miss, you'd better have a look at that note. I have a bomb. He demanded $200,000 four parachutes, and for the plane to be refueled when they landed in Seattle, else the bomb would detonate. He let the flight attendant go to the pilots, where they relayed the information to the proper authorities. Not willing to risk the passengers, they complied with his demands. And once his demands were met, he let the passengers of the plane go, save for the crew who would operate the plane. Cooper outlined his flight plan to the crew, and he had them take off. This included them going very slowly in the air without stalling even having the landing gear out, which would cause drag and slow the plane even more. Eventually, Cooper had the remaining crew all go into the cockpit. Well, he put on the parachutes and opened the rear hatch, jumping out of the plane with his bomb and the money. The plane contacted authorities to let them know what had happened. And once it landed, the search for D.B. Cooper was on, but no trace of him was ever found. Though there were picture IDs of the man, no one could find him. And while the FBI and others say he couldn't have survived the jump from the height he did, nobody was ever found. To this day, the mystery of D.B. Cooper has haunted the government, mainly because it's the only unsolved case of air piracy in modern aviation history. The case remained open for decades before finally being suspended in 2016. Number 8. Carl Gugosian Many people try and avoid a life of crime for various reasons, but for one Carl Gugosian, he embraced it from his youth and never stopped until he got arrested. This all started when he was a kid and got shot after trying to rob a candy store. He was sent to the state youth facility as a result, and the moment he got out, he started to build up his career of being a criminal. Not through doing more robberies, though not yet anyway, but by going the extra mile to ensure he could plan out the most meticulous crimes imaginable in regard to robbing banks. Some of the steps he took included going to the University of Pennsylvania and getting a master's degree in systems planning. He also got military training and was taught how to use weapons effectively. Then once he felt he was ready, he started plotting bank robberies. He wouldn't go through with the first eight, but once he started, he committed 50 different bank robberies, accumulating $2 million in cash, and was only caught because of bad luck. So how is that possible? Well, planning. He became known as the Friday Night Robber, because he would only rob banks in small towns near freeways, and in the winter months when it would get dark by the time the banks would be closing. He even used scare tactics like wearing a Freddy Krueger mask and leaping behind the cashier's desk, all to ensure that no one was on an even keel when he robbed them. Every robbery took less than two minutes, in which he would either have a getaway car ready, a bike a few blocks away, or a forest he could run and hide in easily. And to further ensure his success, he used caches to hide his loot, which was how he got caught, as a bunch of kids found his caches and there was evidence in it to put him away for only five of the eight robberies. And now for number seven, but first, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Number seven, the theft of the Empire State Building. Don't get the wrong idea here. This particular theft wasn't about moving the building from one place to another. Rather, this theft, which was grand in scope, was all about transferring ownership from one group to another. In this case, the rightful owners of the building to a newspaper. This happened in 2008 when the New York Daily News realized accurately that it would be very easy to steal the Empire State Building by doing the most basic of things, by faking a deed exchange. This was done to expose a major loophole in the system that had been done by less scrupulous people in the United States and the UK for many years to obtain deeds to various lands. But they did make sure to show how ridiculously easy it was. 
They even listed original King Kong star Fay Ray as a witness in the documents, making a fake 20-pound notary stamp which shared a name with bank robber Willie Sutton, and filed paperwork with the city to transfer the deed to the property. 90 minutes later, well, the deed was transferred to a fake account they'd set up, called Nellett's Properties LLC. And if you don't get the joke, well, that's stolen spelled backwards. So do they still own it? Well, no. After showing off what they did in their own paper and causing quite a reaction, they happily returned the building to the original owners, but not before having a laugh, no doubt, at how easy and simple it was to do it. Their plan worked, though, and the system was fixed to prevent this kind of thing from happening again. Number 6. World War II Mustang Fighter Plane World War II fighter planes are a priceless part of aviation history, as they helped redefine dogfighting and aerial warfare. The United States had many legendary planes in the air during World War II, including one they gave to the Israeli Air Force known as the Mustang. And after retiring the plane, the Israeli government wanted to take one of the planes they had and put it in a museum. Enter one Air Force Reserve Major Ari Yitzaki, who was wandering around one day and noticed the Mustang on an airfield just sitting there, waiting to be taken to the museum. He got the idea that he could make some money off this, and thus started a rather ingenious scheme. He went and fixed up the plane so it could run again, and then he flew the plane to Sweden, no joke. Eventually, he did find some buyers for it who were more than willing to pay around $331,000 to get the vintage and arguably priceless in terms of importance plane. Here's the catch. You'd expect the plane to be noticed as missing right away. But it wasn't. And then they couldn't find it on their own. So the Israeli forces called in Interpol to try and help find the plane. And sure enough, it was still in Sweden. In fact, the companies that had bought the plane from the Air Force Reserve Major had been flying it for six years before having it be discovered by them. As for Ari, he was caught, arrested, and charged with the illegal sale of government property. The plane itself was to be returned to Israel and put in the museum after some legal battles were waged. Number 5. The Ponzi Scheme And if you wish to know about one of the best thefts ever, it would have to be from the man known as Ponzi, who not only did a theft, but kept it going for generations via his followers. Charles Ponzi started out as a very legitimate businessman, one who realized a loophole of sorts in buying and selling coupons for more than they're worth. So he decided to start buying these and selling them for more money. He needed investors, though. Sure enough, he convinced people to invest, and for a while it was working. His profits were way up, but then the coupon market kind of dried up, and he still owed money to people. So he devised a new tactic. He would get money from new investors and would pay the old ones off. And he did this for years. It was working until he got caught. He was sentenced to five years in jail, and in total, the people who invested in him lost $20 million. This act of fraud would forever be known as the Ponzi scheme. And it's a term used to this day, as is the scam itself, which is why it's one of the most popular scams for people to fall for. It's easy to set up and pass it off as successful for a very long time if no one's looking in the right place. Number 4. Bernie Madoff one of the most infamous men in all of history, Bernie Madoff, did his own version of a Ponzi scheme that defrauded people of $65 billion. This is the largest amount defrauded by a single individual in the history of the world today. The true irony of the situation is that the only reason he got caught and sentenced was because he confessed to his sons, who turned him over to the authorities. But it didn't start out as a scam. Madoff owned an investment securities business and made his success over years of hard work until he was one of the biggest names on Wall Street. To further help him, he brought in family like his son and renowned specialists to help make sure the company ran well. But as time went on, things started to look a little out of place. Madoff's numbers didn't add up, and one man even proved in the course of four minutes that Madoff was lying about his financials, but no one would believe him. As time and the scam went on, Madoff could see that everything was collapsing, and he had to confess that it was all just one big giant lie. Millions were hurt by Madoff, and his greed and fraud are a testament to how far a person is willing to go to make it big. Though the money that he lost could never be returned, the people he did defraud got some justice in that he's sentenced to serve 150 years in prison. Number 3. The Vacuum Gang this ingenious theft really does suck, and it made the men involved rich as a result. This happened in France starting around 2006. A group of thieves realized that there was a flaw in the system to protect money in supermarkets known as monoprix. 
Mainly, the stores use suction tubes to help distribute money and get cash envelopes from one place to another. The money itself is locked behind a safe. But if you hack the tubes, you could get the money. And that's exactly what they did. According to La Parisian, to put it directly into the coffers of cash, cashiers use pneumatic suction pipes where they slide tubes filled with money. The robbers realized that it was sufficient to just drill a hole in the pipe near the trunk, then connect a powerful vacuum cleaner to capture the money stored. They no longer had to deal with the shield. The reason this particular theft is ingenious is twofold. First and foremost, breaking into a safe causes a lot of problems if you're not perfect in your technique. Plus, depending on the quality of the safe, which gets improved every year with new models, it can be very time consuming. But because of the nature of these suction tubes, you don't need much time or work. Just the right drill bits, which you can get at basic stores, and the right vacuum, which you could probably also get at basic stores. All told, the vacuum gang had gotten over $800,000 in bounty via a 15-store robbing spree, and they haven't been caught. In fact, the only evidence of them is shoddy video showing masked men entering and leaving an area. Number 2. Credit Lyonnais Paris Burglars Credit Lyonnais Paris Burglars The date was March 30th, 2010, and the place was a bank called Credit Lyonnais in Paris, France. The target wasn't the bank vault per se, but rather all the safety deposit boxes that were filled to the brim with cash and valuables. All told, millions in euros were stolen from the bank. But how was this theft done? Simple and yet kind of detailed. You see, the burglars in question dug a tunnel under the bank from the next door cellar. Then they cut a hole in the bank's deposit box room, which was in the basement of the building, via thermal lance. And wouldn't someone know something was wrong? Well, yes and no. They were caught by a guard, but it was only one guard as that was the only person in the bank at the time. After all, the bank was closed for renovations. They tied the guard up in a chair, robbed the place, and then to ensure they didn't leave any evidence behind, they lit the place on fire. The sprinklers stopped permanent damage and got the guard's attention so he could call for help once he was free. Because of the sophisticated nature of the crime, the criminals were never caught and there is little evidence to point to who did it. Number 1. Antwerp Diamond Heist The Antwerp Diamond Heist was done by the now legendary School of Turin, headed up by Leonardo Nata Bartolo, and it's the greatest diamond heist in the history of the world, mainly because this was supposed to be a vault and combination system that was uncrackable, impregnable, and so on and so forth. To list out all the ways that Leonardo and his Turin kin worked the system piece by piece in order to get the loot that they stole in large quantities would take an enormous amount of time. But the basics are this. Leonardo himself got himself inside of the vault when the place was closed, and his brothers of the school were able to use an elevator that they'd rigged to go undetected, in regards to motion sensors anyways, to get to the vault floor. Then they proceeded to open the locks of the vault in various ways, including subverting all the sensors and alarms that were meant to keep the safe locked. Eventually, they got into the vault and worked out how to unlock 123 safety deposit boxes that had diamonds and all sorts of other valuables. But these guys were clever. They didn't just take the diamonds. They took the paperwork for them so they could sell them as legitimate. When they were all done, untold wealth had been stolen. And the only one of the crew who was caught was Leonardo because of DNA evidence from a sandwich of all things. The rest were never caught. Thanks for watching. What did you think about these ingenious thefts? Which one surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List and I'll see you next time.